Good day, gentlemen. This is Swashbuckling Sir here, and today we critique Lunar's Wandering Stars, an action puzzle game by Serenity Forge that features nine varying mechanics all revolving around Newtonian physics, ranging from boosting yourself, shooting rockets, to creating black holes and even moving planets. <laughs> Originally kickstarted with $6,700 in October last year, Luna's Wandering Stars is available on the developer's homepage for $10 since the end of March 2014, a Kickstarter game that actually delivered. As there is barely any story to Luna's Wandering Stars except the snarky and self-aware, however entirely text-based narrator, I'll jump right into the graphics. Luna's Wandering Stars uses Unity and Unity Space preset. At least, it looks a lot like it. While the art is functional, it's probably not going to rock your socks. The models have clear edges and the effects are somewhat dated. On the plus side, Luna's Wandering Stars should run fine on older hardware or laptops. As for the sound assets, the music varies from planet to planet, offering relaxing piano tracks as well as upbeat ones. The audio effects are very good too, and thus, the audio is definitely on the stronger side, especially for a low-budget indie title. You'll find a link to the soundtrack in the video description. Let's get on the heart and soul of Luna's Wandering Stars, the action puzzle gameplay. First, what does action puzzle actually mean? Essentially, it is a puzzle game that asks the player to react quickly from time to time. And while usually I prefer pure puzzle or pure action experiences, Luna's Wandering Stars manages to mix the required time elements into the overall puzzling quite well. There are some frustrating levels here and there, and I still think this game could be even better with a slower pace. Overall, it's well done. What does the game ask of you and what are the core mechanics? Since these change throughout the game, We'll go through them planet by planet. The game starts at Mercure, which imposes the challenge to launch our planet in the correct direction with the correct force to collect asteroids, preferably all three golden ones. As your moon grows in mass when collecting asteroids, it gets rather difficult to predict the exact effects, thus a bit of trial and error might be involved. While this mechanic is fun at its core, I was glad when I moved on to Venus. On Venus, the game reminded me of Osmos, as you can boost yourself in the desired direction at somewhat free will. This set of levels is more action based as you are usually given plenty of boost to dash around. The puzzling often lies within scouting the level a couple of times before collecting the golden asteroids. Overall, the Venus area was challenging but still a lot of fun. The third planet is our dear Earth. The mechanic of controlling the Earth's moon is indirect. We can change the gravitational force attracting the moon and thus can influence its orbit. This is the worst mechanic by far, since the on-screen indicators are nonsensical and even misleading from time to time. Luckily, one can skip Earth almost entirely if enough gold was collected earlier. The fourth planet, have you figured out the pattern yet, is Mars. Befitting for the god of war, we are now equipped with rockets that can shoot almost anything. As our moon's path is predetermined here and cannot be altered, these levels feel like a puzzle game. Finding the correct pattern, which things to shoot and which to collect is essential and usually requires a lot of trial and error. Therefore, even though I liked the thought and memorization driven gameplay, I could have done with just a tad less hit and miss. Overall, Mars is on the strongest side of mechanics. The fifth planet of our solar system is the giant Jupiter. On Jupiter, we have the power to redirect our moon's force in any desired direction. This mechanic reminded me somewhat of the boost on Venus, and it does not add too much new experiences to the game. Jupiter's redirection allows a mixture of action and puzzling, however, does not feel fresh for Luna's Wandering Stars and thus is merely an average planet. On Saturn, the good idea of changing the moon's volume meets the frustration of timing elements in a puzzle game. 
While I genuinely liked the core of Saturn's mechanic, most levels require almost pixel-perfect scaling at a very specific time point. Therefore, Saturn is on the horrible end of the nine mechanics, where it can cuddle itself to sleep with Earth. Again, luckily, most of Saturn can be skipped to reach the best part of Luna's wandering stars, Uranus. I'm not going to do the anus joke. Not only can we hear one of the best music tracks Luna's Wandering Stars has to offer, but additionally, the mechanic of placing wormholes that switch positions but not momentum is one of the most flexible and best ideas of Luna's Wandering Stars. There are some problems here and there though, especially levels with vast dimensions that lock the camera onto your moon can be a pain. Nonetheless, Uranus made me think ahead and again memorize levels to achieve a perfect score. Overall, very fun mechanic. On Neptune, we can place black holes that suck us and sometimes other objects towards it. We have to juggle a fine balance between momentum, duration and distance of the black hole. This leads to an incredible amount of trial and error and for me personally, less fun than Mercury, Venus, Mars and Uranus. While there are some intriguing levels, overall, Neptune danced on the edge of being too frustrating to play. The last quote-unquote planet is the dwarf Pluto, again featuring an amazing soundtrack, as well as the mechanic to freely move Pluto and thus its gravitational force. This mechanic is rather easy to learn but very hard to master, thus offering a good challenge depending on the level. Some levels are really fun, especially when you use Pluto to protect your moon, while other levels, specifically those that have time pressure or wormholes involved, are somewhat frustrating. Last but not least, Luna's Wandering Stars offers a level editor coupled with an easy way of sharing those levels, thus potentially offering endless hours of fun. Currently, there are only a few custom-made levels though. Overall, while there are some problems, especially the camera on some levels or the creepingly slow zoom with a mouse wheel, Luna's Wandering Stars is a worthwhile but non-cohesive experience. If you like time-based puzzling revolving around physics, give Luna's Wandering Stars a go. Thanks for watching! Please drop a like on the video and consider subscribing to support my channel. Have a great day. Goodbye.